Wow. And this is the end, end of Stormblood. Credits are rolling. This is amazing. What, um... You know... Oh, there's Lee's. That's a pretty good um, concept art of Lee's. Um, I think she had, like, evil mitts or something that she was fighting with. So this was good. I'm still going to give Stormblood a 7.5. I think again it was borderline 7.5 or, or 8. Maybe this ups it to like a 77 out of 100. Um, compared to a 9.5 Heaven Sword and an 8.5 to 9, uh, a Realm Reborn. So this is a uh, this is great concept art. I like how bright these are. Um, you know, I think that. This thing needs to be so much explained. Um, one thing that I didn't like as much is you got to play as different characters, and that's that's interesting. You got to play as Ishtola, you got to play as uh, Lord Hien, you got to even play as Yugiri, I think, at one point. Maybe not Yugiri, but certainly uh, Ulysse, I think, at one point, maybe Thancred. You know, they wanted you, they were trying it out, but they could only give you two skills and maybe one easy heal, um, cross-class skill. And to me, it just didn't seem very immersive. It seemed kind of gimmicky. Kosetsu, excellent story of Kosetsu. Um, it's not Tsuki, uh, Tsuki Yomi. Yosetsu. I think it was No, it goes back to is that Tsukiyomi, I think, has uh, one of the best stories of Stormblood. She was the saving grace. Her story is very complex, her background is really developed her character. There we go. There's the best character in Stormblood, and the only reason it's a 7.5 or 8 on my rating. Excellent story, like with her side story. Really fascinating um, how you know the icons or Elkins or whatever you want to call them. Um, yeah, it was really, really interesting. Um, I'm hoping that I, I, I hear Shadow Breakers is better. This just felt a little bit like ARR. You go around to a bunch of mini alliances and try to get them together by doing tasks. Um, and then they tied it together with the Almigo resistance thing. I just felt like it was very busy. Stormblood was very busy, and it told, just like ARR, a whole bunch of different stories. Um, don't think they did any of them very well. Um, Tsukiyomi is awesome. Or it's y Yosetsu, that's who it is. Not Tsukiyomi. Um, is it Yosetsu? Uh, I can't remember. It's probably Suki only. Anyway. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, it, it didn't seem that compelling. And we didn't really move along any better understanding of the Asians. We got the idea of, okay, they're, you know, the Empire is made for chaos, but then there's something about rejoining the 13 sharded worlds to the original source. It still seems very convoluted at this point. I'm guessing Shadowbringers makes it clearer because everyone does it and I'm you know I didn't get emotional when the scions kind of started dropping off oh there's Nanamo uh, or Nanamo oh Nanamo the um it's because even though they're lifeless there's this history of like oh bringing back the soul and the body kind of thing and I don't really believe that they're gone I don't know what's happened but you know, Shadowbringers, some people call it Fuels Bringers. I'm hoping that that answers a lot of these questions. I'm just giving it a grade, you know, from, from where it is. The post MSQ quests were better than the regular MSQ quests, which isn't great. Um, yeah. Is that a Shkola? No, it's not. Of course not. Um, yeah, oh, that's it, you got to play as Ishtola, that was kind of fun. But, you know, it, again, it was kind of gimmicky. They gave you three or four actions. Um, 
Who's Raban? This is really more about developing minor characters like Elise, Raban, Kosetsu, uh, Shukiyomi, uh, Yosetsu. Yeah, it's Kosetsu and. Uh, I really gotta remember her name. <laughs> Before the end of the year. See you. You know, it's a shame that See you wasn't around longer. Because they really could drawn out uh, patch 4.3. Uh, See you is short for Yosetsu, I think. I think I'm getting the name right. Uh, Yotsuyu, that's it. That's it. There's Yotsuyu. Well, there's Tsuyu, but, um... Yotsuyu, I think, was my favorite character in Stormblood. Yotsuyu right there again made the, you know, made the story very bearable and was really good. Um, that's probably going to be the compelling story that I remember Stormblood from. Uh, in fact, I remember her name, but it's, it's Yotsuyu, that's it. And uh, this is the best side story, you know, of the, the whole thing. Uh, we didn't progress the whole Asian story very well. It's still kind of up in the air. You know, it doesn't go anywhere. Um, anyway, I just want to say thank you so much for, for taking the time to watch. Again, I'm giving Stormblood a 7.5 out of 10. If I'm giving Heavy Sword a 9.5. And they are uh, a 9 or an 8.5. So, you know, hopefully it's better. Uh, well, there you go. There's your sexy again. The best uh, character, I think. But thank you so much. And now I think there are usually a couple more cinematics after the uh, after that one. So I think we have to technically uh, finish it off. There you go. Uh, and then I think there's some cinematics to end the expansion before we begin anew. So let's see if we get some explanation here. Oh, there we go. Who's that? Is that Nero? Uh, okay, you got the eyes. Bloody savages! A pity your hunt leads you elsewhere. Not that I am surprised. Okay. May you find joy in it. Grow stronger. More savage, huh? Oh, there's the green flag. I will reclaim the rightfully mine. Interesting. There's the crystal tower. 
Since they threw wide the gates, they mean the gates of the Crystal Tower open? Because didn't they lock them again? Maybe that's what it meant. Maybe there's some uh, Algan technology in there that points to the stars or something. I don't know. 